Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is great to see you here. This video is something that I am throwing up kind of last minute. So the quality is not the greatest, sorry about that, but I wanted to hurry up and get this out because it involves brand new research that was just published two days ago, hot off the presses. And this is important for people who follow this channel. And speaking of which, if you don't follow this channel, follow this channel. <laughs> Because I talk about food, nutrition, weight loss, and research. That's what I do. I have my handy dandy phone that I'm going to be referring to because it has the study on it. And I want to make sure that if I am citing to it, that I'm saying the right thing and not paraphrasing incorrectly. Importantly, I'm going to be leaving two links in the description box below. One of them is the summary to this published article. And the other one is the published article itself, the link to it. So if you want to check those out, check those out there below. The study was conducted in part by Kevin D. Hall. Now, if you have followed me for any period of time, you know that I have cited to his research before. And importantly, Kevin Hall, his research has been cited by both high carb plant-based experts and low carb animal based experts uh, so for example uh, michael dr michael graker he cites to kevin hall's research and jason fung also cites to kevin hall's research so he's not a person that belongs in either camp and he doesn't have an agenda so to speak what this research did is it compared a low fat high carb plant based diet to a high fat low carb animal based diet and to be honest what i wish they would have really done is that they would have compared a high carb plant-based to a high fat plant-based because I think that comparing those would be really interesting, but maybe that will be something done in the future. But it is what it is. We have what we have and it's interesting. It's really interesting information. Now, caveat, this study was a very small study. It involved 20 people over only a four week period. So a small study in terms of number of participants and also small in terms of length of time. And what they did is they took the participants and they split them into two different groups. One group ate high carb, low fat plant-based for the first two weeks. And the other group had the low carb animal-based diet for the first two weeks. And then after the first two weeks were finished, they switched the groups. Here's what they found. Both groups lost weight. Okay, so when either group is like fighting with the other one saying, you can't lose weight that way, like, yes, you can. And um, it's not just this study that shows it, the whole body of literature supports that you can lose weight either way you go. But there are a ton of other factors that have to be taken into consideration at the same time. Also, it's important to note that both groups were told to eat ad libitum. This means without any sort of restriction relative to the quantity of food that they had. Both food groups involve minimally processed foods. That's very important to note. And it's also important to note that the low fat, high carb plant-based group was actually a true low fat group. I'm saying this because in the Mediterranean diet study, the big study that everybody talks about in Scythe, which is actually full of flaws, that was not a true low fat study. So that one concluded that, oh, low fat diets are not as good as the Mediterranean diet. And the low fat group was 27% fat, not low fat at all. This one's a true low fat study. It was about 10% of the calories came from fat. And on the low carbohydrate side, it was about 10% of that diet that came from carbohydrate. Also quick caveat that one of the participants during the low carb portion of it dropped out due to hypoglycemia. So full disclosure. On average, the low fat plant-based diet resulted in a reduction of caloric intake anywhere between 550 calories to 700 calories than the low carb diet. And even though both groups lost weight, the low fat plant-based diet group, they lost significantly more body fat than the other group. Really interesting. And I think one of the presumptions has been that if you are eating a high carb, low fat protocol, that your insulin is going to be all over the place. And this study definitely supported that, that that's what happens. But even though the low carb, high fat people, they lost weight, they didn't lose as much body fat, even though their insulin was lower and steadier. And this makes sense. Historically speaking, if we sort of think about how our ancestors would have been in the wild or something like that, you don't really have this selection. You eat whatever you can get while you're at it. So it makes sense that your body would develop we have insulin for a reason and that your insulin would fluctuate up and down. The problem is that we have so many flipping processed foods and your body doesn't know how to handle that. That's when insulin instability can really have a 
big effect. With both groups, they didn't really overeat, even though they were able to eat ad libitum. What does make people overeat is processed food. That triggers a lot of cravings. It screws with your brain chemistry in a lot of different ways. So all in all, if you want to try to avoid overeating through food, try to eliminate as many processed foods as you can, regardless of whether you're high carb or low carb or anything in between. Focus on whole foods. Also, it's important to note that this study put an emphasis on non-starchy vegetables. A lot of people in the low carb community, they just think that means a whole bunch of dairy, a whole bunch of eggs and cheese and meats and yada, yada, yada. That's like a one-way ticket to a heart attack. You need to have those non-starchy veggies. And this study supported that. Researcher Dr. Walter Longo out of USC has said in an interview that he believes that a plant-based low-carb diet with minimal to no processed foods might very well be a great ticket for people in terms of longevity. Either way, fibrous plants, they're the way to go. They're going to help you lose that weight. Eating fewer processed foods is going to help you lose that weight. The more plants you can get into your diet, the better. And if you're really, really, really wanting to know what can possibly lead you to more body fat loss, even though your insulin is all over the place, it might very well be that high carb, low fat, but a truly low fat protocol. 10% fat, that's it. And that's going to occur naturally in a lot of foods like nuts and seeds. But as I also always say, it's not necessarily about what the research says. It's about what fits your personality. Because if you are the type of person where you are a low carber and you just can't you can't take the high carb for whatever reason. Maybe it's your cultural background. It's your traditions. Maybe it makes you feel better for some other reason. I don't know. Then that's okay. You do not have to force yourself to be in this high carb, low fat camp. You don't. You can still lose weight being a low carber, just like you can still lose weight and possibly more body fat being a high carber. And if you want to lose body fat as either a high carber, a low carber, or anything in between, I offer a membership called the Health Boss Blueprint Membership, and it helps anybody, like it doesn't matter which personality you are, it works with your personality and it pairs the best science with your food personality so that you can lose weight for the last time. And that also conveniently is in a link below. Please give this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate the love and support. It does help this channel grow. So please, 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 if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until next time, ciao.